And then onto the final bit. So once we've standardized the hydrochloric acid there, then we are going to use that to work out the concentration of our sodium hydroxide. So this is the unknown. So the way you're going to be doing this is with a pH curve. So as we can see with this, you take a little bit of sodium hydroxide, uh, pipette it down into a conical flask. You've got the hydrochloric acid in your burette and you slowly add the hydrochloric acid to it. And you should record obviously the pH changing. So the pH initially would start very high because it's sodium hydroxide, so it's a basic solution. And then what you'll see is it slowly drop down until you get to a point where neutralization has occurred. And it's what's called the equivalent point where you'll get a sharp change in the pH. So it should go something like 13, 12.9, 12.8, so forth, so forth. And then it might suddenly go from 10 down to 4 and then continue dropping after that. So depending upon obviously your practical, I'm going to say that my sharp change took place at 30. Just randomly picking that out. So with this, obviously, if we started at, just to give you an example, 13.00 up there, 12.80 next. Change in pH is the change between these two. So that was 0 0.20. And then the change in the pH over the change in volume, volume change by 2 cubic centimetres. So I would do 0 0.2 divided by 2, which comes out at 0 0.10. And just one more example. So now it's the change between these two here. So 0 0.10 there. Again, a change in two. So this is now 0 0.05. And like I said, at some point you will get a sharp change. So I'm going to say here I went from 10 down to 4. So my change in there is obviously a big change, 6. And again, change in volume, 2, so 3.00 in there. Now, what you should see is when you plot this on the graph, you're plotting, as it says, change in pH over the change in volume on the y-axis against the volume on the x, is it will look something like little squiggles across, and then you'll see a big spike afterwards and that big spike should correspond to this where you read down and it tells you that volume generally you can probably see it just from looking at the numbers on here whichever one's got the biggest but you need to be able to draw the graph and actually read down and mark that point there so this is what we're interested in because this is the volume that we can now use on the calculations which again follow it. So I'm just going to make a note there and say that took 30.00 cubic centimetres. So first off, the number of moles of HCl used to neutralise the base. Again, concentration times volume. If we remember right, a bit up the page, let me refresh my memory, 0.502. And then the volume, which we've just seen there, my case, I've just made it up 30 over a thousand. Always remember this, please. CM cubed divided by a thousand gives us DM cubed. So 0 0.502 times 0 0.03, 0 0.01506. 0 now, the number of moles of NOH neutralized, look at the ratio, so 1 to 1 means the number of moles of these exactly the same. So, essentially, I'm just dividing by 1 and times in by 1, which now we can all do in our head, just means it's exactly the same number. And then final bit, concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Again, rearrange an equation, N, C equals N over V. We've got the number of moles. 
volume, lock back up the sheet. Again, do not use this. Look at how much you actually had in the conical blast. Doing the practical with, we had 25 cubic centimeters of the sodium hydroxide down in there. So again, conversion. And there is our end concentration. So we've made up a solution initially at the top there, if I can drag up. So that's part of making it up. And then doing the titration, first part of the calculation there, and second part of the calculation down here. These are what's required for P2. Thank you.